Today on TFL Bike, we have news in the electric motorcycle world. This is a new motorcycle from Fuel, and it's called the Flow. Yeah, and Fuel has got an interesting story behind it because it was... Uh, it's one of the works of Eric Buell, which makes sense by the name. Uh, we all know Eric Buell, you know, the Buell motorcycles of the past, their partnership with Harley Davidson. Um, this is totally different from everything like that. This is an all new electric bike. So it's kind of funny that the brand name is Fuel, but yeah. Um, yeah, interesting. But we have all the specs here. We have a release date. We've known this thing was coming for a while and now everything's right here in front of us. And it's got a really cool look, so we're going to dive into it and see what it's all about. Exactly. So to start off, Fuel is calling this motorcycle an urban e-commuter. So, you know, like with a lot of electric motorcycles, it's not really meant to be a highway bike because your efficiency on the highway isn't that great. And so it seems like part of what they're trying to do with this bike to differentiate it from a lot of the other electric motorcycles on the market is make it slightly more compact and lightweight. And starting off with a performance, we've got about 47 horsepower, and as a lot of electric vehicles do, they claim 553 pound-feet of torque. Of course, that number, you know, it's not like this has the same amount of power as a 15-year-old F350, um, but yeah, it's it's it'll be a torquey machine, but 47 horsepower is more the number to focus on. Yeah, exactly. Those torque numbers are always a little weird and can't really comment on torque till we get a feel for it because those numbers are just kind of crap. But 47 horsepower, um, it's uh, the motor is in the rear wheel itself. They say they have a pretty unique design. Um, interested to maybe talk to someone about that eventually um, or kind of dive into it because um, everything seems to be covered up. It's a really solid design. You have a, a traditional looking wheel in the front, but this really futuristic looking solid wheel in the back. So the motor's all hidden and everything. Um, but yeah, it should get you up to speed pretty quick. They're claiming a zero to 60 time in 3.5 seconds and a top speed of 85 miles per hour, which for an urban commuter, 85 miles per hour is plenty. Yeah, so if you had to go on the highway for some stretch, you definitely could, and it's decent acceleration. Um, but of course, again, your efficiency on any electric motorcycle on the highway is not going to be very good. And digging into some more of the hardware on this bike, it's a 10 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery and 10 kilowatt hours is smaller than a lot of the other electric bikes that are on the market. But as a result, that makes this a lighter bike and we'll get to that in a second. But the electric architecture on this is 400 volt. You have a 750 watt onboard charger and you can also get a 3.3 kilowatt and a 6.6 .6 kilowatt accessory fast charger. Yeah, it's cool to see that you have a few different charging options and can kind of spec it out how you want it. There's also a CCS charge port for what they're calling supercharging, but really just, um, you know, we refer to supercharging as Tesla's charging network most of the time, but it's really just like fast charging uh, on public charging stations, which is really cool because a lot of electric bikes out there don't have any sort of option for a public charging port. They're all um, either an onboard charger where you plug it into a wall outlet or an external charging unit, same thing, you plug it into the wall and then plug it into the bike. So this is really cool. You can go use those public charging stations. Not the first electric bike to do this, but um, definitely uh, there's some out there that don't have this feature. So if you're using that CCS type two DC fast charger, it's about uh, 30 minutes to do a full 100% charge. We know most people aren't doing a full 100% charge, more typical to do like 20 to 90%, and that cuts the time in half to 15 minutes. Yeah, so their claimed charging times are potentially really good. 20 to 90% in 15 minutes is not that bad at all. I mean, you could take a 15 minute break from riding pretty easily, and in yeah. that time you would get most it's of your battery break. back. Yeah, exactly. Stop, pull your helmet off, take your jacket off, stretch a little bit. Yeah, grab some kind of beverage. And um, it's 10 hours to charge with the onboard charger. So if you're charging from home, you know, it's it's going to be an overnight kind of thing, which will be fine for a lot of people. But if you want to cut that down, it's two and a half hours with the 3.3 kilowatt charger. And it's 1.25 hours or so an hour and 15 minutes with a 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger. So uh, really not too bad. And 150 miles urban range, that number... 
you know, that's what they're claiming. We'll have to see how that actually shakes out in the real world. Hopefully at some point we'll get a chance to throw a leg over one and see how true to that 150 we can get. Yeah, totally. So I think all the way around the board, good charging numbers. Um, I like that you can kind of spec it out how you want it. Keep it on the cheaper side if, you know, you're not going to do long rides all the time and overnight charging works for you. You can use that CCS port um, to get you charged up if you're doing kind of a longer haul. So, yeah, that's all real good stuff. Yeah, I think with a 10 kilowatt hour battery, 150 miles range even in town is is potentially optimistic. But, uh, you know, again, we can't. We have to withhold judgment until we're actually able to get on the bike, just based on some of the other testing we've done with bikes that have bigger batteries, like zeros in the live wire. Yeah. It, it might be hard to hit that number, but who knows? We'll, we'll have to wait to find out because it's completely different engineering going into this bike. But one of the advantages of that smaller battery is it weighs 400 pounds. Yeah, 400 pounds is really impressive for an electric bike. 400 pounds seems like... A uh, pretty reasonable number for a small, you know, urban commuter. But when you consider this has heavy electric motors and batteries in it, uh, yeah. I think 400 pounds is really pretty cool. Um, impressive that they were able to get the uh, the weight down that low. 30.1 inch seat height, so pretty low seat height yeah. too. I'm having a hard time picturing just looking at the like the assets for this, the video and images, how big it actually is. Um, I know that they're mentioning this compact size, but um, like these yeah. 17 inch wheels do look kind of big on this machine, so. Yeah, and again, I mean, that being a 30.1 inch seat height, you know, it doesn't look like the seat dips incredibly low compared to the rest of the bike. So I would have to assume that proportionally, uh, this is probably a, a fairly compact motorcycle. Again, until we're actually able to get in person with it, it's hard to really say. Yeah, exactly. A um, few other specs, 40 millimeter inverted forks up front. You have a rear shock that's adjustable for preload and a single sided swing arm as well. And then kind of this tire hugger rear fender that comes off the back of it that everyone's going to need to chop off the bike <laughs> immediately. Um, one of the really cool features is a storage compartment in where the uh, the traditional gas tank would be. And they claim that this is a 10 gallon storage area and it can hold a full face helmet and a computer at the same time. Yeah, which is a lot. I mean, that's, that's a ton of storage, really cool, especially to be able to tuck away your helmet when you park your bike, you don't have to carry it into wherever you're going. Really nice feature to have. So that's potentially a really good advantage of the particular design that they've come up with for the flow. Yeah, and a few other design elements too. Um, you've got this cool kind of teal accent that runs through the bottom of the bike on all f all the different colors that they make, which by the way is silver, red, and blue. It also, if you look at the back right where the, uh, the shock mounts um, to the swing arm, there is passenger pegs there as well. So two up vehicle, you've got a nice, kind of long looking seat there and also some grab handles back by the taillight. So it should be pretty comfortable for moving around town. Um, and then I wanted to point out the headlight design too, cause it's just got this really round kind of bulbous look to it that I think, I don't know, it has like a space theme to it. It looks pretty sweet. Yeah, and honestly the general shape of it does remind me a little bit of Buell bikes of the past. So uh, it's kind of cool that they're, I think they're tying in a little bit of that style into this bike, obviously, updated to be more modern and more futuristic because it is an electric motorcycle. Another cool thing that they're doing with design on this is uh, like a lot of high performance motorcycles are doing nowadays uh, on this bike, they're using the powertrain or the battery part of the powertrain as a structural member in the chassis, which is pretty cool yeah. because that's something that we see with a lot of modern bikes using their engine, their combustion engine as a structural part of a chassis this bike is doing the same thing with the battery. Yeah, and then you have less, you know, frame components, yeah, you know, weight's going to be shaved down, exactly. Um, and yeah, center of gravity should be nice and low because they're able to just kind of integrate everything and package the bike around those components instead of like building a frame and figuring out how to shove 
third party batteries and motors and everything in there. So exactly. Pretty sweet. And also something pretty unique about this is they're saying that the battery motor and charging socket can all be upgraded over time. So if, you know, a few years down the line, if you own one of these and the CCS standard changes and, you know, the public chargers now have a different connector on them. Um, yeah, like or NACS or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. Or battery technology improves or, you know, motors are, you know, require much less power now so you can put a more powerful motor in with the same size yeah. battery any of that's possible and um fuel is saying that down the line you could potentially swap out different components yeah. and modernize the bike which is cool so it should be modular and uh and finally pricing on this bike comes down to 12,995 msrp but if you pre-order one of these bikes they're actually 10,495. So there's a little bit of a break there in price if you pre-order it. And they're expecting that these bikes should start shipping at the end of 2024. Uh, so, you know, we'll have to see how the rollout is on these bikes. I mean, we've definitely seen um, plenty of, of EV manufacturers and I mean, manufacturers in all segments, both uh, motorcycle and automotive struggle with rolling out new vehicles. Uh, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how how these this bike rolls out, but hopefully it's something that we get a chance to ride. Yeah, I really want to ride one of these. It's a little questionable right now, like what the exact pricing is going to be for different charging options and how you spec these out, but yeah. um, that at least gives you a little idea of the pricing. But anyway, hopefully we get to the chance to ride one of these. I'd love to do a range test on one. So yeah, um, I think Andy would love to check one of these oh, out yeah, too. Oh yeah, he would. Do you enjoy doing range tests? Yeah, I do. I remember you doing tests. the zero range test, and uh, I just remember seeing yeah, you. Yeah, you got to tweak it back <laughs> a little bit, you know. That was, I don't know. It looked I like mean, you were tired. <laughs> yeah, you're riding 80 miles an hour into the wind to Wyoming for, you yeah. know, a long period of time, and it hurts, but it's fun. That was a good <laughs> day of work. So, yeah, I'll do a range test if we get one of these for sure. Right on. All right, thanks for watching. Check out alttfl.com. Catch you in the next one.